This is Ted Humphrey. And and his daughter Donna, and son Ted. And I understand that there was a concerted effort when I referred to the younger Ted as Ted Jr. You challenged me on that. Why did you challenge me on that? He just corrected. He corrected me, I'm sorry. Why did you correct me on that? He's not a junior. He's not a junior. He slipped a different uh, middle name on him. A different middle name. Mm -hmm. So what is Ted, Ted the Younger's Ted middle the name? <laughs> Frederick. 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 Okay. The Ted Senior's middle name is Solon. Solon. S O L O N. Solon, as in okay. the, the wise. Uh, Absolutely. The, the wise leader. Okay. The wise leader in Greece. In Greece. Okay. So you didn't think I ain't Greek. So you didn't think the younger Ted would be that wise, right? <laughs> okay. Also passed me by the third grade. It's by the true. third grade. Well, we have something we'll get into in a moment in the first grade, but uh, you are almost exactly ten years older than I am. What's your birthday? Your birthday. Really? Yes. December twenty eighth. December twenty eighth. So you are almost a Christmas baby. Yep. Between Christmas and New Year's. Yep. Okay. And uh, uh, let me see. And where were you born? Why? Well, <laughs> we all know said? why you were born. You okay. We don't have to go into that. But <laughs> where were you born? Rochester, New York. Rochester, New York. What is Rochester famous for? Uh, Bob Maloney. <laughs> Bob Maloney. And Kodak. And Kodak, in that order. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, George Eastman was from there, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Eastman Kodak. Eastman Kodak, right. And uh, it says your father was a truck driver, your mother was a school teacher, and both came from dairy farms. So. You had a milking good time. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. In fact, when you were younger, your parents moved to New York City, but your mom got rid of you for the summer by sending you to the farm. Back to the farm. And one of the interesting things here um, was that in New York, you were considered a country boy, and out in the country you were considered a city slicker. City slicker, right. You just couldn't, couldn't quite... This identity problem I had. Identity problem. You still have that? Absolutely. Oh dear, okay. Well, that might make it a little more fun too. Uh, <coughs> tell us about, you, 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 you started regularly at PS146. Yep. And we have a little... Everything I am, I order PS 146. <laughs> right, and you showed improvement. Here is first grade school report card. <laughs> Not many people can come up, have that for the savings. That's for sure. And at the beginning of this semester, you were unsatisfactory in your posture. <laughs> by the end Still of the so semester, awesome. you were, you showed improvement. But the big thing here that I notice is that at Let's one just stay with posture. <laughs> at one point there, you got an unsatisfactory in playing well with others. <laughs> Works and plays well with others. Yeah, and uh, but then you showed improvement. Okay. So you showed improvement, and respect. They taught me and respecting the rights of others. So, but everything else, you were satisfactory or you were improving. In reading, you were satisfactory. In speaking clearly, never. you were showing improvement though, so that, that's good. So, 
Well, I think the Still camera can see the back of that, though. It's very the important. Back. Oh, the back? I didn't even know that. He was promoted. Oh, he made it to second grade. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. Made it to second grade. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Congratulations. Thank you. Doesn't say that you got to skip second grade and promoted to third grade, though. No. Okay. Well, okay, enough of that. You did move around a fair amount as a kid. And then when you retired, you traveled a lot, too. A bit then. Yeah, okay. Now, something very fateful happened after high school. Well, during high school, what was your job, your summer job? A uh, soda jerk. So the jerk. And so you, at that point, you wanted, you got interested in that, right? And so after the, high school, you went store. to college to become a pharmacist. a pharmacist, or a druggist, as they said in those days. All right. And something very, very interesting happened to you in pharmacy school. You had a fellow student named Frank. And what was the significance of Frank in your life? Uh, he, uh, he had a little three by five card that he posted in the office for room for rent. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Did anything come of that room for rent? And the rest is history. <laughs> well, yeah, we want to know that history. Uh, Frank had a sister. And the rest is history. <laughs> that was Julie. That was Julie. Yep, that's how Julie. I met Julie, my sweetheart. Your sweetheart. And my so bride. she was, looks like an Italian lover, right? Her name Not was. I. No, he, no, she <laughs> was. She yeah. was. Janetti. Yeah. Janetti. All right. Julia, spelled with a G. U I U L I A, Julia Gianetti. Mm. Now that's one of those names that you have to use your hands to say, right? <laughs> Julia oh, Gianetti. Bit, of course. Okay, good. Uh, so you got married in 1955. Yep. And then you moved to Augusta, Georgia. I was in the army. Where you acquired a new accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And. Something else happened in Augusta, Georgia, in 1957. Uh, I was born. All right. You made a song as, up about Yes. Or as uh, my dad's favorite joke was, I was born in Georgia so I could be close to my mother. <laughs> oh, okay. That sounds interesting. Do we need to, do we need to ask any further about that? So, okay. Figure it out. All right, we'll figure it out. It would be awful to have her somewhere else <laughs> if you were being born. Uh, then you moved back to Boston, and you worked for a big pharmaceutical company. The Upjohn Company. Upjohn. And you were a pusher, I mean a salesman. Salesman. Right. Yeah, okay. Pharmaceutical rep or whatever okay. title I care to use. All right. Well, good. And then in oh, no. 59... Detail, detail men. Oh, detail men. Detail men. Detail men. Okay, detail. So did you go from doctor's office to doctor's office yeah. uh, touting how wonderful these, uh, these pharmaceuticals were? Okay. And I won't inquire uh, further I about that. dealing at an early age. Yeah. Uh, that, that's kind of a sensitive subject these <laughs> days with the pharma yeah. pharmacy industry. But... Something else happened not too long after that, 1959. I was born. All right. So. Had my lovely daughter. Yes. <laughs> and then, uh, 1961, came number three. Chuck was born. My son Chuck. Your son Chuck. And Chuck had a great influence in your life because within, within a month, he got you to uh, 
move. We had to leave town. <laughs> <laughs> you got thrown out of town, right? <laughs> okay. You wanted to come to California. It says here to take a state board license exam. Right. Just well, uh, for a short time, just to take the exam. To take the exam because that would give you more prestige wherever you went, right? Well, Julie's brother was out here and was shoving and pushing and urging me to come out so okay. he could have his big sister, his uh -huh. kid sister. His kid sister, okay. And uh, I have to say that that resembles a little bit my parents because my mom and dad were married in 1936 and my dad was a farm boy from Aberdeen, South Dakota and they went on their honeymoon to Los Angeles and stayed. <laughs> Sounds familiar. And so, as you would say, the rest is history. <laughs> but that's time for another interview. Um, one thing about growing up in New York, you became something of a sports fan. Uh, what was your favorite team? The Brooklyn Dodgers. The Brooklyn Dodgers. You came out here in 1950, no, they came out here in 1958, and three years later you followed them. <laughs> so, so maybe that has I something to them. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You stayed with them. So that, see, that shows how dedicated he was. <laughs> well, and also you would point out that they won their first World Series, 55, the year that he and my mom got married. Okay. So they've been they've been joined at the hips. Fifty five. So that was uh, okay. So there's a there's really an interesting history there with the Dodgers, <laughs> huh? Walter O'Malley and all those right. folks. Yeah. Uh, bought a home in Westwood and became active in Saint Paul the Apostle Parish. There have to be some good stories coming out of Saint Paul's and Westwood, are there? <laughs> Are there? <laughs> Refresh his memory. Well, um, I, I think the, the record has to show that my father was not a Roman Catholic at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and his uh, political leanings were far right of extreme right. And um, Attila the Hun. Farther right. Yeah. Uh, Attila the Hun was way too uh, progressive for your taste. At but, that time. But my mom um, knew that the way that she could get us into Catholic schools was to point out that if we went to public schools, the public schools were run by commies, and that we would become atheists. Therefore, we were put into the Catholic school, because even though we are Catholic, at least we wouldn't be commies. And so then, gradually, she introduced more and more of Catholic stuff uh, to my dad. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the rest being history, he um, was baptized Catholic. 1970. 1970? 1970, yeah. yeah. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> all right. By the, by the deacon. Yeah. By the deacon, all right. That's so it was, even better. It was all my mom De working deacon. things yes. around. Well, that's what you call Italian diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. So she had her waves, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, that's, yes. oh, yes. Tell us some more stories about her waves. I mean, ones that you can tell to a mixed audience. <laughs> not, not pretty much uh, anything outstanding. I mean, just a grand and glorious mother. Uh huh. And to everybody. Not just the three of us. To everybody. To the whole, okay. the well, whole school. That's, that's <laughs> the characteristic of Italian mamas, too, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. All right. So, um, but you're both, I mean, all of you watch your weight fairly well. You, I'm sure that you heard the manja manja quite a bit. Of course Absolutely. we did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's genetic. Genetic. Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, is pointed out here also is uh, you, you were involved in a lot of community service. Especially, what, in Culver City? 
Pretty uh, much. The Exchange Club served as president. Any good stories about community service? Just what uh, many of us do. We work for the community, put on community functions. Mm -hmm. The uh, Exchange Club was known for their production of their annual uh, fireworks show, which is one of the best fireworks show in the Los Angeles area. Okay. Where was that held? Uh, the high school in Culver City. High school, okay. Yeah, in fact, I remember, are they still doing it? Yeah, that's my knowledge. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. So, yeah, I think I have, I think I've, you know, stood out on the balcony I, here and you watched probably it. probably can see it yeah. from here. Yeah. <laughs> so, everybody come upstairs in the priest's house on 4th of July, <laughs> and you can see the exchange club. Uh, about three people will fit, actually, on that balcony. <laughs> but you can see the Exchange Club uh, uh, Fourth of July fireworks from here. Okay, maybe from the, right above here, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 right above. Um, now, you were a big sports fan beyond just the Dodgers. Uh, it says the Trojans, football, and Raiders, football, and the L.A. Kings. Uh, you even have a memento from the L.A. Kings here. Your 25-year season ticket guitar is over there. 25-year season ticket. Oh, the guitar. Electric yeah. guitar. Okay. Did you ever learn to play the guitar? No. Did any of your family ever play the guitar? Um, Chuck did. Chuck did. Yeah. Our younger son yeah. Chuck. It still has the label on it. Yeah. yeah, it's all autographed by the team. Oh, my goodness. So if you really need, at any point you need the money, you could probably <laughs> auction it for a few dollars. Uh, a lot of Marvelous. A lot of the sports um, was, was due to my mom mm -hmm. in Boston. She was a huge uh, uh, hockey fan okay. and from the, the Boston Bruins. And um, so those were the only games she ever had kind of a torn loyalty is when the Kings played the Bruins. I um, see. So yeah, she uh, she really loved sports and and baseball and um, because she was a Red Sox fan. All right. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, she's just a Ted Williams fan. Yeah. I think Ted that th that should be entered into the the record. Is that <laughs> my mom was a huge Ted Williams fan. So the question when we say, "Am I a junior?" is was I named after my dad, or was I named <laughs> after, after Ted, Ted Williams? Ted Williams. Because um, she uh, well, she ne never been determined. Yeah, she taught her. Uh, her dad, who was Italian, uh, how to follow baseball just by listening on the radio, and she would keep score at the games and she even kept during score little, all league, your little league games. During little league, uh, she would uh, keep score. Yeah, I gather keeping score sort of runs in the family, <laughs> um, which is which is interesting. So uh, and so, your mom had an affinity for people named Ted. <laughs> That, uh, that at least is clear. Um, and the Stanley Cup in 2012 and in 2014. So you saw the Kings win the... Their first Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Oh, let me see what else here. Any... Any good stories out of the pharmacy business? You actually, you ended up owning two pharmacies here in Culver City, right? Yes. Both near Bratman? Yeah, and, in the uh, medical buildings. In the medical buildings. In fact, I think the term dermatologists that some of us go to, may it's right above one of those pharmacies, mm -hmm. I suspect. They're on, is it Hughes? Uh -huh. Hughes Avenue, yeah. It was just uh, the other day. Got a few little things burned off. But uh, uh, anybody here, were you, was he your pharmacist? He, uh, we used to deliver here to, in Mary Crest Manor and different. Okay, mm -hmm. so you used to be one of the pharmacies serving mm -hmm. Nazareth House. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So to the, that, I have to say think of her name. that used to be the receptionist here a million years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, one thing that uh, my dad is probably too humble to talk about is humble Humphrey. Yeah, <laughs> humble Humphrey. <laughs> Every probably summer and you know Christmas vacations and. Whenever anyone needed a job, it was one of Dad's pharmacies. How many Poyers and <laughs> Craig and Stephanie and people from our schools that needed a job? It's like, oh, go ask Mr. Humphrey, and you'd be a delivery boy or stock boy or clerk or behind the register. Or, I mean, we spent, when my mom got sick of us, she sent us over to help him at his store. I'm not sure we helped that much, yeah. but we kind of got paid in candy, so that was kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> but he definitely uh, employed a good chunk of our parish. Uh -huh. Over the years, over the uh -huh. how many years he owned pharmacies? Decades? Yeah, before uh, Starbucks. Exactly. Where else were people supposed to get jobs? Yeah. So That's um, right. That's right. They worked for my dad. Yeah. Actually, when I was just starting in the college seminary, one of my um, summer jobs was working in Fedco mm -hmm. department store as a drug clerk in, in, the, in the drug department. So, uh, so I guess there's another little <laughs> affinity there. Uh, one of the gifts that you bring now to Nazareth House is that you are a lector. Were you a lector at St. Paul's? I don't remember. I guess so. Long time. Was yeah, it? long time. Long, long time? Yeah. So, once they got you Catholicized, <laughs> they had their ways of uh, putting you to work, I, too. I had that, uh, that mark. Hey, he's a lector. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so, um, one, of, one of the ways, my mom's Italian ways to Catholicize him. Catholicize. Yeah, after, you like that word. Yes, yes. Just, you, word. You, uh, you just have a way of uh, creating words that we love is that once we got into St. Paul's and we got exposed to the nuns, but then we would have our family vacations. And of course our family vacations were all trips to the missions. Right. Oh, so okay. then that was the, uh, the other thing. And I, I really think, um, I, I have so much sympathy now for what my parents went through of who in their right mind would just load three kids and, and a, a dog. big dog into a station wagon and just drive around all summer. Start in San Diego. And Visiting missions. Yeah. Visiting missions. Yeah. You know, Ted, you remind me of a story that, um, Dad, you probably don't want to admit this, but the nuns before in the 60s at St. Paul's, oh. they, didn't, they didn't even have a TV in the beginning in the convent. And eventually they got TVs, whatever, and they um, didn't drive. So the only person who had enough gumption to teach them how to drive was my dad. So he, he taught pretty much every nun there in our family station wagon how to drive. The funny thing is, he's a terrible New York driver, so that was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> and the nuns probably learned that very well. You've noticed. Particularly because in those days, they all drove with blinders on, didn't they? So. Uh, I have to ask this, going to St. Paul's school, was Sister Stella there? Yeah, of course. <laughs> My father was the one who picked her up at the airport when she came to get to be a principal. So yeah. that is history. That's a connection. That is history. There, were, there was no Uber and the nuns couldn't drive and so uh, if you had a nun arriving at the airport, you had to get one of the parents to and, run the errand. And guess who was the one who yeah. was gotten the most? Station, probably gotten the station wagon family. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, well then, um, when did you retire? 2008, I think. 2008? Okay. Did you sell the business? or? Yeah. 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 Okay. I won't ask how it's being run now, but <laughs> it's still there. Very well. Good. And what did you do 
in retirement, what did you and Julie do in retirement? Because at that time, you finally had the kids out of the house. <laughs> and you didn't have you, to pack a whole... You did a lot of nice traveling. Yeah. yeah. And well, tell us about where you traveled. Refresh his memory. Europe. You went all over Europe. Yeah, Italy. most most of Europe. Italy, France. And then you went back to Boston for your fiftieth uh, right. wedding anniversary. We had a big party in yeah. Boston. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> okay. And then and then we went back to the same church, where so, where you were married. Uh -huh. and, and, okay. Yes, and then went to uh, Sunday mass. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. And I presume there are pictures of the wedding mm -hmm. and all yeah. of that over mm -hmm. there too, and maybe some of the pi some pictures of the travels over there. Good. Uh, Didn't you go to Russia too? Well, I think before it was even just was still uh, Soviet, a little Soviet, Soviet Union. Union. Soviet Union. Yeah. I remember you telling me this was before digital, and it was film, and you said you wasted money buying color film because everything was gray. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so although the inside of some of, well, of course, the churches wouldn't, would not really have been displaying much at that time, right? Or maybe not even open, but uh, uh, they are now. So, okay, anything else from uh, from retirement? When did you come here? When did you and Julie come here to Nazareth? House? The day after Epiphany. Uh, 2014. So the Feast of the Epiphany was that it was Sunday, actually, that year. So that Monday, um, 2014. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that kind of covers your life from then to now. Um, anything else that you would like to add, or any other tales out of school that uh, uh, Ted and Donna would like to add? Can't think of anything. Anything anyone there. else would like to add? You know, he has been days. here, and uh, Julie passed away, what? Last, last year? April. Last year, last April 16th. Year, uh, April 16th, so almost a year. Uh, so they've been here since 19, or 2014. Uh, which means that uh, maybe you have some stories about them. Uh-oh. <laughs> Anybody? What about his Halloween? Oh, uh, yeah. oh, my goodness, yes. You have the most famous holiday decorations <laughs> in the building. Yes. So uh, <coughs> tell us about those. I, I can claim nothing. My wife was the uh, master at decorating. She had a lot of decorations. Um, Halloween and Christmas. Our little room here is infamous for that. So your wife was decorating. Oh, absolutely. I'm assuming in the last couple of years, somebody else may have <laughs> taken over the decorating. Well, he uh -huh. actually does um, sort of oversee it. I just sort of implement it. But there's a lot of good source material. I have to say my mom okay. had a lot of really great decorations. So... He has been known to be a little bit directive from time to time. <laughs> Bossy? Oh, no. Nah, no. Okay. Okay. Any other uh, thoughts, questions, observations? That was a really good one about the, about the decorations. But what else here, if anybody like to uh, comment, what else is Ted famous for here? That's an honest question. I'm not trying to lead into anything because I don't know anything else. He's always good with a, a, a woody quip at his uh, table where he sits. I like to sit next to him because he always says something funny. A witty quip. Okay. Is that why you eat outside now? <laughs> yes, I would think. Where did he get his wonderful singing voice? Where did you I get your... sit in the area near him. You can always pick it out. Yes. Where did you get your wonderful I singing deny it. voice? I because deny it all categorically. <laughs> okay, you and Lenore are going to have to fight that one out. Yep. Okay, next time perhaps we will have a singing contest between the two of them. Okay. Anything else? In 
further answer to her question, her point, uh, my Protestant upbringing with the, before the Catholics were much for singing during Mass. Uh, I spent a, most, of my, most of a lifetime of, in the Protestant Church and we were well known for singers. Okay, so you actually got your, um, your hymn singing aptitude um, from your years as, a, as being in Protestant church. That is Luther, their gift Luther to hymnal. us, the Lutheran hymnal. Yep. So you will, whenever we sing A Mighty Fortress is Our God, you I will... I know both verses. You, <laughs> he knows both verses. <laughs> I think there's four verses, aren't there? <laughs> oh, okay. He sings the first two twice. I sing. Okay. I think. All right. I um, I'm sure that my father was a, a great pharmacist, but he should never have gone into pharmacy, uh, because his real area of aptitude is um, the Rogers and Hammerstein um, show book. Um, and I remember just a, a couple of years ago when I was showing my dad the um, film version of South Pacific, um, and one of the, uh, the lyrics in the song is talking about a, um, a, a particular woman, and there's a reference to a baseball glove. Okay? And, um, but there's a difference between the original Broadway lyric and the movie lyric, which my dad just jumped right onto. And so there are a lot of things, and I think you've noticed it with my father, that just seem to skate past him. But if it deals with a particular lyric to a particular uh, Broadway show, uh, there he has a steel trap memory. Mm -hmm. Everything else kind of catches catch can. Or as he always says, hum the first verse and I'll fake it from there. <laughs> Okay. I remember right that the film version was DiMaggio's glove. You are correct. And what was the original Broadway version? Of the song Bloody Mary, yeah. by the way. I know a little bit of that stuff, too. I... Well, well I don't know. that will be your homework. <laughs> yeah, really. We'll see if you can go from unsatisfactory to show's improvement. <laughs> Show tunes for 40, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Okay. Well, um, anything else? Well, I just want to thank you all so much. Thank we you, have Father. been at it for uh, 34 minutes now. Or 33. 34. Okay, sister. Um, and, uh, well, then, well... We'll have to see who's next. The next one, I think, is going to be in three weeks. Is that right, Christina? Yes. Three weeks. Because in two weeks, on Sunday afternoon, is the, uh, uh, the song and prayer, the, con the prayer concert, basically, in, uh, in, in the chapel. And you saw some advertising about that, which that's always wonderful. So three weeks will be the next. Um, uh, the next getting to know you, and we are still looking for somebody who will volunteer to be interviewed, and perhaps to be an interviewer, if you like. And uh, no volunteering somebody else. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. Well, God bless you all, and have a good afternoon. And don't forget to look at the pictures over there.